let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, can you can you see the screen now? Is my screen visible? Yes, yes sir. Okay, fine. Uh, so I will be talking about very, very ground basics about uh, antibiotic susceptibility testing. And I'll start from uh, when do we when do we perform antibiotic susceptibility test? Uh, there are uh, two different types of indications. It can be non-therapeutic indications, which can be either epidemiological, taxonomic, or evaluation of newly introduced agent to have local experience. But uh, if we take out these, actually both CLSI and UCAST are primarily made for therapeutic antibiotic susceptibility test where the testing has got a bearing on the patient's uh, outcome, the, the treatment of the patient, and finally the outcome. Now, how, how do we say that when do I carry out antibiotic susceptibility testing? We do it on any bacterium that contributes to infectious process. That means we have to have sufficient confidence and evidence that this organism I am going to test, it has really contributed to the infectious process. Shouldn't be a, a common cell, it shouldn't be a contaminant. And uh, whenever we have mixed cultures and we, if we have any doubt about whether actually any one of them is causing the infection, we do not carry out an antibiotic susceptibility test. So, any bacterium that contributes to infectious process that warrants antimicrobial chemotherapy. Actually, this is again important because not all uh, small infections require an antimicrobial chemotherapy. There can be a small, small uh, ulcer on the skin which can probably be treated simply by antiseptic dressing and we do not need a systemic chemotherapy for that. So. Uh, we have to have a, a bacterium which contributes to infectious process that warrants antimicrobial chemotherapy. And the third important point is where susceptibility cannot be reliably predicted from the identity of the organism. You know that organisms simply from their identity, uh, we can predict, for example, some certain organisms are 100% susceptible to certain antibiotics. For example, penicillin for streptococcus pyogenes. When we know it is 100% susceptible, we don't usually routinely test for it. Similarly, we know that all gram negatives are 100% resistant to vancomycin or many other gram positive antibiotics. So if there is a 100% resistance, we do not test for it. For example, all streptococci are 100% resistant to uh, aminoglycosides and we don't test for it. So, uh, uh, I'll uh, tell again to, to, to stress on it. So, antimicrobial susceptibility tests are not indicated when the nature of infection is not clear, when the gram smear or culture suggests a normal or mixed flora, and usually in such situations, it's of little relevance to infectious processes, and in those situations, antibiotic susceptibility tests are unnecessary because if we carry it out, it more often results in misleading the clinician rather actually helping the clinician. Uh, we have, uh, I mean, even in my previous slide, you see that I have started with any bacterium. So that means we always start with an isolate, but there are, there are situations where one might think about direct susceptibility test with the clinical material because it saves time one full day. Uh, it should ideally be avoided because you know that whenever we are carrying out a direct susceptibility test, we are not sure whether in the specimen we, we do have a bacterium. Uh, secondly, how many species are there? Thirdly, what is the, the load of individual species? And fourthly, we don't even know what are the identities of the species. 
because susceptibility testing, the panel of antibiotics is heavily dependent upon which species are we testing. So uh, they are still done in clinical emergencies in certain situations. And truly speaking, if you look at the latest uh, CLSI guidelines, they have included uh, the test for performing disc diffusion directly from positive blood culture broth, that means bottles. But remember that till now, <clears throat> it's actually limited to enterobacterials and no, no other groups of organisms. It's limited to only six antibiotics and not more than that. And then it should be carried out within eight hours of the bottle flagging positive and the detailed uh, methodology is given here. And one must put up a purity check, uh, which will be actually uh, needed the next day for reporting. One should report the results only when the purity check shows a pure organism, which is identified as a member of the enterobacterials. Then only these tests are valid. Okay. Uh, what are the antimicrobials that we test? There are international recommendations which are found in CLSI tables and UCAST guidelines. But you, you must base that those guidelines, but you should have your local decision or policy made by each of your laboratories, which should be jointly decided by a microbiologist, infectious disease specialist, pharmacy and therapeutics, people and infection control committee. All together, you should have your limited list of antibiotics to be tested for every type of uh, uh, organisms. So already uh, Dr. Shastri has shown the M100 document, which is meant for antimicrobial susceptibility testing of routinely isolated organisms. And if you go into the, uh, into the uh, uh, document, you will find that the first table that is table 1A gives you the recommended, internationally recommended antibiotics for enterobacterial pseudomonas aeruginosa staphylococcus species and enterococcus species in four different tiers. We have group A, group B, group C, and group U. I'll come to those groups slightly later in a subsequent slide. And similar tables are available for the non-fermenting gram-negative bacilli like Acinetobacter, Burkholderia, Cipatia, Stenotrophomonas, Maltophilia, and other non-enterobacterials. They're also available for the relatively uh, fastidious organisms like Haemophilus, Neisseria, and Streptococcus species. Now, to make antibiotic susceptibility tests relevant and practical, the number should always be limited. You will frequently come across uh, uh, antibiotic susceptibility test results from many private laboratories giving a, a full list of maybe some somewhere around 40 to 50 antibiotics with plus, 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 triple plus type of sensitivity uh, mentioned against them. That's not, the, that's not the way. The numbers should be limited. There are uh, certain uh, recommendations, like one should test only one agent from clusters of comparable agents where the interpretive results are similar and the clinical efficacy is comparable and the related groups which are connected by or where the, the uh, susceptibilities are nearly identical. So in this group, we have similar. Here we have nearly identical spectrum of activity and cross sensitivity and cross resistance are nearly complete. I'll give you an example. Let us look at the table for Staphylococcus species. And I will uh, draw your attention to this list of fluoroquinolones to be tested for Staphylococcus. You can see here we have about eight fluoroquinolones. Each one is in its individual box separated by a line. So that means these antibiotics should be tested individually and susceptibility to one of them does not necessarily give us an idea about susceptibility to the, uh, any of the others. Similarly, in, in another box, you can see here we have azithromycin or clarithromycin or erythromycin. So that means these three agents for this particular organism, 
they show nearly identical susceptibility or resistance that means cross susceptibility or resistance is nearly complete and therefore you can test one of them and you can interpret it for all three of them there can be complex boxes also for example if you look at here it says ciprofloxacin or levofloxacin these two have nearly identical behavior whereas moxifloxacin being within the box is not is not connected by or so that means it's very similar but the the susceptibility is not completely uh, uh, predictable okay then the agent reported must be tested except the situations where we use a surrogate agent to test another antibiotic for example for oxacillin susceptibility in staphylococcus we use cefoxetin so these are the situations where we test one antibiotic but report for another antibiotic well uh, i showed you the table 1a and 1b where the antibiotics were mentioned in tiers of group a group b group c group d group a is appropriate for routine primary testing panel group b may warrant primary testing but one should report it selectively uh, if the group a all the antibiotics the organism is resistant to all the agents or there can be selected specimen or organism say third generation cephalosporin for enteric gram negative bacilli for meningitis cases or maybe uh, cotrimoxazole in urine so these are the uh, or maybe there may be a polymicrobial infection so there are two three organisms and the list of uh, group a agents may not cover uh, more than one organism so those are the situations where the group b becomes valuable then we have group c which are situation specific that means these are supplemental agents uh, particularly for wards or institutions which harbor endemic or epidemic multiple drug resistant strains uh, where in a situation where the patient may have allergy to the primary drugs or we have unusual organisms group u is meant only for the additional antibiotics that we test for urinary isolates coming to the medium muller hinton eger which was not primarily primarily standardized for drug susceptibility testing but it has been found to be the best for non fastidious bacteria there are multiple reasons for that it has it has fantastic batch to batch reproducibility it's very low in inhibitors shows a satisfactory growth of most non fastidious bacteria and we have huge amount of data and experience available with muller hinton eger now the medium that we will be using the muller hinton eger plates so they should be tested for sterility and should be used within 7 days of preparation and they should be dried for about 10 to 30 minutes still no visible droplets of moisture are, uh, are there on eger and lid just prior to inoculation okay uh, muller hinton eger has got a very stable ph many of the antibiotics are known to be uh, very very susceptible to ph and shows either increased zone of uh, inhibition or decreased zone of inhibition based on ph changes similarly antibiotics are known to bind to divalent cations and show lower lower zones of uh, inhibition a uh, zinc is known to be i mean excess of zinc can can show smaller zones in case of carbapenems a uh, muller hintonegger i also told that they are low in inhibitors muller hintonegger is very low in thymine or thymidine that is because uh, thymine or thymidine they are intermediate metabolites in the pathway of folic acid synthesis and therefore if we actually stop the first level of folic acid synthesis by uh, paraamino benzoic acid uh, uh, imitators and then supply a subsequent metabolite then organisms can have a shortcut route and synthesize folic acid and therefore the medium must be free of all subsequent metabolites and the most important is thymine or thymidine 
and one can test the medium for its thymidine th thymine free status by growing uh, indicator organisms uh, how do you store antimicrobial discs you know that antimicrobial discs should be refrigerated for two to eight degrees centigrade short term or frozen at 20 minus 20 degree or less than minus 20 degree for long term beta lactams are particularly unlabile uh, high, there are highly labile agents like imipenem, cefaclor, uh, clavulanic acid, which should be better frozen till use. Uh, it's a very, very important point that you must always remove the discs at least one to two hours before use and equilibrate the temperature of the discs to room temperature before you open the vial. Because when you open the vial, if the discs are at a temperature below the environmental temperature, then the cold temperature of the discs will attract moisture from the environment. That moisture will deposit on it. It does not matter for the discs that you'll be, you'll be using immediately. But if you leave residual another, say, 20 or 25 discs where moisture has deposited on storage, the antibiotic will lose potency. So residual discs should be sealed ideally with desiccator and refrigerated or, uh, or frozen never use discs post expiry inoculum preparation uh, they are always matched against a turbidity standard of 0.5 mac fervent you can use your own barium sulfate turbidity standard or you can use uh, uh, the densitometers supplied by automated susceptibility testing equipment vendors uh, we usually prepare the inoculum by selecting three to five colonies of the same morphotype from an overnight culture and touch the top with loop or swab. We must touch, we do not scoop out. Uh, why we touch three to five colonies? Because we want our inoculum to be representative of the majority of the organisms and if we pick up one particular colony, there is a risk that we might pick up an aberrant or a, or a mutated uh, um, colony. So, uh, and then we suspend it in normal saline, adjust the turbidity, and it should be used within 15 minutes. It's also uh, possible to uh, make the suspension or inoculate it onto uh, TSP, incubate it at 35 degree till you get the turbidity or adjust the turbidity to McFarland 0.5. But once you have adjusted, it should be used within 15 minutes. So you dip the sterile cotton swab into, into the uh, suspension, rotate it, and then press on the on the upper part of the side of the tube to squeeze the excess of the fluid then only we can inoculate so i say that in most of the situations a direct suspension in normal saline is adequate but there are two situations where a culture a broth culture is necessary number one one is old culture because old cultures do not phenotypically express their their phenotypic properties and in situations where we have a rough culture, which may not give you a homogeneous suspension. Okay, now what we do is we take the plate which has been dried and then hold it with the, with the hand and with the other hand, we make the inoculation in a horizontal uh, incremental way. And after that, we rotate the plate by about 60 degrees centigrade and then again repeat the same type of incremental from above downwards side to side inoculation again rotate the plate by 60 degrees centigrade and again repeat the same thing why we do it three times by rotating it at 60 degrees centigrade at 60 degree is because it gives you a homogeneous type of lawn culture uh, when we apply, apply the discs, uh, some people they find it more they find more comfortable using using a tweezer. Some people they they feel more comfortable using a needle. Uh, it's a personal choice. One should press down the disc for complete contact. Should not use more than six discs for a hundred millimeter plate. More than twelve discs for a hundred fifty millimeter plate. 
uh, the discs should not be closer than 24 millimeters center to center. Uh, if you can plan to arrange alternately the discs which have a predictably small zones and predictably large zones. Sometimes what happens is that the disc falls at a place unintended, at an unintended uh, place. If that happens, never try to relocate the uh, disc by picking it up and putting it at the right place. You pick it up and throw it and take a new disc. Incubate within 15 minutes after you have uh, placed the discs at 35 plus minus two degree aerobically for 16 to 20, 20 hours except for uh, certain situations where we incubate it for, uh, for at least 24 hours. So you can have a, a kind of uh, uh, drawing like this on which you can place your plate and, and you can, you can uh, uh, place your discs like this, whether you put five or six discs on a 100 millimeter plate. How do we read the plates? The lawn should be confluent or a near confluent lawn. If you see individual colonies, which touches no adjacent colonies, then probably the inoculum has been light. You should repeat it. Next, the measure the zone to nearest millimeters. Normally, you must read it in reflected light with unaided eye. That means you hold the plate, the light should fall on the plate and you must see it with your eye from the, from the side. So this is the normal uh, way of reading the zone of inhibition. Ignore faint growth or tiny colonies which are not detectable by unaided eye but can be detected with a lens. They should be ignored except this situation. Uh, so in for oxacillin and vancomycin in staphylococcus and enterococcus, the, the recommended method is that you should see it in transmitted light with the help of a lens because the oxacillin and vancomycin resistant entero and staphylococci, they are relatively slower growing and therefore they form very minute colonies and presence of minute colonies should be detected. They are better detectable with a lens and in transmitted light. Remember that antibiotic susceptibility test is a test for growth and nothing other than growth. That means anything other than growth should be ignored. Swarming of proteas, hemolysis, faint growth less than 20% for trimethoprim or sulfonamides, they should be ignored. Okay, this actually shows a less than desired growth where the colonies are not touching any adjacent colony and this may be a bit too heavy a growth. Okay, now I am coming to the end of my presentation, reporting. Report only those antibiotics which are appropriate for clinical use for this particular syndrome at that particular site of infection for the organism that you are testing. Do not report those which are meant for taxonomic purposes, those which are meant for epidemiological purposes. Sometimes you also have isolates from non-living surfaces, uh, surveillance things. We do not report them uh, uh, in the same way. Always report as per CLSI criteria, sensitive, intermediate, resistant, or SDD, sensitive, dose dependent. Uh, report oxacidin resistant as resistant to all beta lactams. There will be more, more discussion about all these uh, uh, extra comments. Uh, do not report misleading results. For example, first generation to second generation cephalosporins or aminoglycosides in Salmonella or Shigella, even if they turn out to be sensitive. Similarly, there are many other situations which probably uh, there will be much more detailed discussion later. So I won't go into more details about it. So I will end with a particular slide saying that CLSI or even uh, UCAST distribution susceptibility test is a robust technique provided all states are religiously adhered to without any compromise in any of the components of the full uh, flow of work. I have seen people, uh, I'm, uh, long back I have asked somebody that how do you actually compensate for the 
the differences in thickness of the plate or difference in disk content. So somebody asked, uh, answered me that it, an experienced technician can take care of all those factors. So there is no question of subjectivities in, in uh, uh, antibiotic susceptibility testing. So I will show this particular uh, photograph, which is a known picture and a known uh, dialogue from the movie. Hum jaha khade ho jate hai, line wohi se shuru hoti hai. So many people have their own modifications of CLSI and they call it CS CLSI. They believe that they are doing the ideal CLSI. It's not that you have to adapt to the robust and uh, uh, religiously adhere to all the all the different steps of the uh, antibiotic susceptibility testing. So this this particular statement does not apply to antibiotic susceptibility testing. So with that, I end. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your enlightened uh, introductory session. So uh, every uh, small aspects of uh, M02 you have uh, covered here. So the uh, participants must be, uh, I mean, they, uh, they would have gained a lot from your session and this will help them to uh, answer the MCQs which will be uh, thrown to them in the subsequent sessions. Yes, and then we can go into slightly more details. Yeah, yeah, sir. So any any questions you want to ask the participants? Uh, uh, the Who are there in the panelists? Uh, you can unmute yourself and or, or you can raise hand if you want so that we will call you one by one. <laughs> Somebody asked that why we should we should we should uh, report the vancomycin or oxacidin resistance in transmitted light. The reason is that uh, uh, both oxacillin resistant staph and vancomycin resistant enterococci they are relatively slower growing organisms, and therefore in a period of eighteen to twenty four hours they may produce colonies which are too small to be seen in reflected light without a lens. So that is the reason these two are exceptions. Uh, for all other situations, uh, we report it in reflected light without a lens. Sir, there is no joint diameter interpretation in case of anaerobes. Uh, what is your view, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, truly speaking, for anaerobic organisms, uh, the only method recommended by the world authorities is, is actually the, the, the agar uh, dilution test and or uh, broth dilution test. And therefore, uh, disk diffusion tests don't work. Truly speaking, uh, you will see that disk diffusion tests don't work in any organism which requires more than 24 hours to grow. For mycobacteria, even many people they have tried and couldn't couldn't really standardize it. Even for rapidly growing mycobacteria, reporting HLG for uh, for enterococcus is the next question. Which uh, this will be covered in the uh, gram positive or discussion session. It will be covered later on. What is the distance of disc from side of plate? There is no particular recommendation. What no I the recommendation? Yes. <laughs> sure. Okay. All of. Uh, uh, sir, I have you? put that, sir. Huh? The person. I have put that, sir. Those questions will be addressed in subsequent question, uh, subsequent session. Yeah, Golistan, you will be covering. Yes. yes. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, should any attempt be made from reporting? So uh, there are some MCQs uh, uh, shown here. I request all the participants to answer. Uh, how many MCQs and how much time you are going to give uh, Neeraj? There are four MCQs are there. 30 seconds, sir. So, yes. each. Two minutes for four questions. So can you uh, uh, dis uh, display the timer for them? It's already, it is already there, sir. Timer is there? I am not able to see the timer. Where it comes? It's the upper side. Top of questions.
वन मोर मिनट लेफ्ट टाइमर इज नॉट टाइमर we'll only get the percentage of how many are correct the names will not be displayed so you can attempt all the questions yeah please attend all of you the questions only the percentage of right answers will appear so all of you please try and read and attempt the questions thirty more seconds available please if firstly in the meanwhile you can load your presentation okay sir yeah the participant introduction yeah we will have i'll i'll load the slide sir share the screen yeah you can wait then yes sir yeah no putting is end somebody is uh, messaging can't see questions log logging with phone and cqs are not shown is it the 34 people voted for this poll how many voted 34 people oh there are around 217 participants 217 participants they are not able to see questions four people voted so shall we show the result right now or later no no don't show the result but why they have not participated results you have to show only when i tell you have to wait okay okay fine so, but here problem is why they could not answer i mean they, uh, they could not attempt all of you are able to see the question can anybody uh, text if they don't see uh, and then no sir not able to see the questions now team can you restart the timer and give some more time till the participants are able to see the questions and answer we can't run again ma'am otherwise last time wala will be uh, deleted no oh, that is okay last time we can't see the questions no no last time they can delete it but they all can answer again no so that can we start fresh yeah start fresh okay yeah. okay we will do now again for 2 minutes yeah again for 2 minutes so we are starting press again for 2 minute whoever has uh, opted before are requested to opt again is it seen to everyone now i Part can see. yes ma'am seen see no okay Thank anybody who is not able to see please text in the chat and i cannot see the timer it's coming on the above uh, in progress uh, seven minutes uh, counting where it is coming i am not able to see only last time also i could not see sir it's there on the right hand corner of the timer is being displayed sir right hand corner of poll the uh, basics of ac heading is there no there the timer is coming for me it is not coming uh, even for me it's not coming can you see now sir timer yeah no attendee are now viewing the question yeah yeah i can see that now i have made you post also sir that's why you now you can see no but why this uh, what is this blue lines that is so many people have participated no till now that is the blue line sir So till now, eighty eighty four people have voted right now. Till now, eighty four in each. I mean, eighty four. We have fifteen more seconds to go. Shall we close at two minutes, sir? Hundred and eight people voted this time. Our time up. Is the time up? Time is up. Time is up now. Okay, close it then. Depressly, you start your session. Okay, sir. Yeah. So 
good afternoon to all of you uh, pallab sir has nicely given an insight and overview of what are the important aspects on, in antimicrobial susceptibility testing as sir has rightly told that we have to be very religious in the small small aspects because 